We're at Alpine Historical Park and we're at uh, Katie Wade's Indigenous Garden. Um, we're going to be showing some silverberries, uh, which is a really special material. It's our pre-contact bead and it's a, a medicine plant. Uh, it's a little late in the year, so all the leaves have fallen off, but we still have some silverberries on the branches here. So you'd pick the fruit and then uh, you're going to peel it. And inside has like this powdery stuff and it's a silverberry is a wolf willow. Most willows have the same um, uh, chemical makeup as aspirin. The seed is what the bead becomes. So when it's wet, when it's still wet from the fruit, you peel it, clean this off, and then you would pierce it with a needle and put um, some thread through it or some sinew. It would shrink up and dry and, and become like this little cement bead that will just last forever. Use your fingernail to, to peel away the first layer and it gives you these beautiful stripes and they're just kind of naturally built into the shape. It's a really beautiful little bead. Um, and I'm actually wearing one right here. Um, this is something that it took me a while to figure out what these were because I, I first saw these in the NMAI collection on uh, the fringes of regalia. And nobody could really tell me what they were. They just knew they were organic materials. So coming back to Chickaloon this summer, I just kind of stomped around <laughs> the woods and was peeling apart every sort of pod or seed I could find and discovered that this is what we used. I'm only going to um, boil a few at a time because you just want to boil what it is you're going to be using at that time and then you'll just kind of go back and forth between boiling because you don't want them to dry. Once they dry they turn into uh, like little cement little cement beads and you can't rehydrate them. So these have been frozen. Um, I, I harvest them in uh, uh, early September. Boil them on medium heat, 10 or so minutes. And then I let it cool down until I can touch them and because you have to clean uh, the skin and the fruit off of them. And the, the boiling water just helps plump them up and make them really soft and easy to pierce. So now that they've cooled, now I'm gonna pull off the, the little fruit on here. You're just cleaning it off. You just roll them in your hands, clean right up, and they'll still have some of the, the skin on the edges. You know, so sometimes I'll take it and just put it on a rock and just sand it down a bit, but you don't necessarily need to. So I'm using number one Glover. You just have to do your best, of course, because they're an organic shape to come out <laughs> the right end, not through the side. But if you do, it's okay to re-pierce it, because once it dries, it's, that's when it uh, keeps its shape. Your hands do get a little slippery. Sometimes it's good to have some pliers, little baby pliers. I was just stringing it on artificial sinew that I haven't split, so it's a nice thick. So I could leave it like this and it would get a really dark brown. Um, or you could just take your nail and just start peeling and you'd get this really beautiful white stripe. You're just peeling off the first layer. And you're just, you're just kind of scratching on the ridges. These need to all be uh, strong and the surface needs to be scratched now or why it's wet. Otherwise, it's really kind of hard to get that surface off of there. They'll get really dark, but it'll just take time. It's kind of an amazing little thing because it's a bead that you don't have to tie off because yeah. it shrinks a little bit. It won't move anywhere. Okay. As you take them off, you probably just want to take a file and just remove the sharp edges. There's a lot of little fibers you have to kind of shave off. So for my yoke, for the piece that I'm doing, I'm going to be using them on sinew as beaded elements, not elements that are going to be put on to hide. If these needed to be strung on hide, I actually have to string them on hide in the moment as they're wet. I've never tried using the silverberries on hide, so we'll see, see how it works. See, we can do kind of our own, oh, see, this might be a little bit too, too thin there. So when you're cutting fringe or cutting welts, you want to try and remember or figure out where the orientation of your hide. So for the sake of, of the demonstration purposes, the spine is where my arm is, and the thinner the hide gets, the weaker it is. So I would be wanting to cut fringe uh, perpendicular to the spine. If you don't know where that is, 
or you have just pieces that no longer have the demarcation of where the outside of the skin is, then you might want to do a test piece. So this feels elastic-y. When I pull this direction, you can see it stretching more. And this feels more like pulling apart a cotton ball. Like it, I, can, I can feel like I can hear it through my fingers that it feels like stretching a cotton ball. And that's the, the direction um, that was weaker if we, when we cut into it that way. So that's, that's just how I kind of tell like which way does it want to stretch and relax back to itself. So I am cutting this direction to get those elasticy pieces to work and then they stretch and they come back together. When we cut that way and stretch, they snapped. So cutting this direction perpendicular to the spine is what I'd recommend using for fringe and also the direction that I try and cut when I'm cutting welts. So as we talked about before, you know, the silver berries are somewhat of a new thing that uh, I recently started using. So we're going to do a bit of an experiment in trying to um, string them on hide, uh, like the traditional yolks um, on the fringe. So we're going to boil some silver berries and really blow them up and then we're going to cut some really thin pieces of the moose hide and see what we can do with some embroidery needles. <laughs> All right, so I have a straight edge here and then I have a, a rotary cutter. I'm not using scissors, um, I think just because there would be some breaks as, as you're moving along the hide with the rotary cutter. Hopefully we can create a really smooth piece of hide that we're going to be able to pull the silver berry through fairly easily. So I'm just trying to make it as thin as possible. So I'm just going to shape these little bits so hopefully they're a little bit easier to go through. Trim these so they're the same, same width. When you look at um, traditional regalia with silver berries, the fringes are just super thin. They're, even, they're thinner than this, so I'm actually going to try to cut this one more time. I went ahead and I tapered the ends of the hide that I'm going to be trying, and I'll do the same with these pieces too, just to try to make it a little bit easier for the berry to, turn, to get on there. But the thing is, though, it's like no matter what you do, it's going to have to fold fold on itself like this and be pulled through. I wetted this in my mouth to get it in there, you know, so we'll just see. It might be worth it to wet it and to like really, really try to flatten it and chew on it. I'm taking them off the boil, so I'm just letting them cool down a bit. Uh, I try to get them as, as plump as possible um, for this piece at least. We'll see how it, how it works out. So I'm not using a glover, so I'm not using a, a knife. So we'll see how it, how it, this embroidery needle that's fairly dull can pierce it. Yeah, no problem. Oh, I should have grabbed my pliers. Oh, just, oh, but look, it's on there. So when I'm looking at it, you can kind of see a little bit like where it could actually split on you. And I'm just going to taper the, at the top. There we go. Ooh, this one split. So I'm just taking a little bit of the bear grease and beeswax and trying to make it so it's easier for the berry to go over this little doubled sort of nub right here. Mm hmm worked. It is still, it's still kind of cracking a little bit. So we have our tests right here um, from last night of the silver berries and they really kind of split a lot. Really the issue for us right now for figuring it out is the moose hide is kind of the wrong material and that caribou is really the, the right material especially for learning on. Um, so maybe getting, testing it out on the right material to get good at it and then might be able to do the moose hide easier once you're a pro. Yeah, all this, all these things take a lot of practice, you know, and this trial and error, this is just the beginning. So I think that we're going to try on some softer hide, some deer hide that's available to us now, and just uh, try to get good at it. So we were talking about is like using the, the bigger needle or even like an awl, piercing it, and then 
once the hole is a little bit larger, then stringing it through like Melissa's doing right now so it can dry and yeah. kind of compress onto the hide. Yeah, while it's still wet and still is a little bit more forgiving because that seems to work pretty well. You know, we just have to make it so it can stretch without splitting so badly. This piece of moose hide that's pretty um, spongy, kind of like the deer hide is. Um, so it kind of can be done with moose hide. To get moose hide that's like this thin, you have to either do a, a tremendous amount of scraping or find the right parts of the belly to do this type of fringe with. And that's why mm -hmm. like the caribou makes sense that you could get fringe pieces that are like almost a foot long, and then also have enough for quill work on the top. Yeah, because it's, it's also very forgiving, you know, just a lot softer and probably a lot easier on the berry if yeah. it's trying to be forced onto it. <laughs> So now we're going to um, work with the silver bears again, trying a, a little bit of a different method. So uh, I have a piece of deer hide, which is a little bit plushier and closer to the caribou hide, as we described, and um, just have a knot tied on the end. And so what I'm going to do is just take the silver berries that have been uh, boiling for about 10 minutes or so, and uh, I'm going to pierce them. And then with that hole, I'm going to try to just string onto here. So the Otno word for silverberry is dimba. Actually, one of our clans is named after the silverberry, too. It just kind of tells you how important it is. So we're going to try it with the embroidery needle. It's a little bit smaller than the awl. So I think a big problem is that these, they, they're full with a bunch of like fibrous materials. So it's like almost like you have to hollow them out. Let's just try this for now. So then I just have this on a piece of sinew. Goes through here. That doesn't really want to work. So it's just twisting the end. I have my fingers wet and it's it's been tapered already. This is the deer hide. That just makes it really thin and easier to go through, and the edge is cut tapered. It also lets you test if, um, if the hide is strong enough, too. It's better to break it now than when you get your berry on and then it snaps because you have a good piece of hide. So we're just trying another thing, just trying to use the needle to, to, use, to be able to push the end through. I'm just using the needle to try to stuff it through. All right, so I'm gonna pull the needle out. Yeah, that worked. In a way, it kind of makes sense. Not having a modern needle, we just use this like an awl, like a really tiny awl, like you could use a bone needle for, and just used it to, to attach it to the top. Joel went ahead and and spun this, which is what looks like the fringes, and just stuffed it in there. And as it shrinks, it should adhere to the hide pretty well. So now what I would do is go through and scrape the edges if I wanted to have those striations, the little white stripes on it, which you don't always see in collections, but I think they're really beautiful. We're gonna try to do the, uh, another silver berry, and uh, I'm gonna actually use a moose bone needle. So try to use, let's just try to use the traditional ones. So I'm just piercing the hole first, trying to get out some of the fibrous materials. And I go really slowly because I, uh, I don't want to split the silver berry. And as you push it, you see some of the fiber coming out. And that's really what needs to be kind of cleared out. It needs to be hollowed a bit. So we're just going to go both sides. Like really just kind of make that hole. We're going to take the twisted hide that Joel twisted with some water for me and I'm going to kind of wrap the needle around the twist and use it to push it through. And these are still wet so you want to be gentle with it. You don't want to be too hard I think because it will just split on you. I'm going to just start gently pushing this hide through. There it is, there's the tip of it. I remove the moose bone, just start pulling on it. 
and just pull it right through. I'm gonna try to pull it up to the plushy part because you want it to shrink onto it. And there you go. When you're doing this, it's, it's gonna split on the ends a little bit and that's pretty normal, but as it dries, it almost dries like cement. So you don't have to worry too much. As long as it isn't split down the side, it should dry pretty hard and durable.